Hello everyone, my name is Anna Grace and you are watching Grace Artistry. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do plein air painting. This is not something I'm super familiar with. I've only done a handful of plein air paintings in my life and I learned a lot. So I'm hoping that you enjoy watching me kind of struggle a little bit and also come up with something that I thought was all right in the end. I got to go to Arizona for the holidays and was able to meet with one of my favorite YouTube artists. His name is Mural Joe, and I'll attach a link to his YouTube channel. I've learned so much from this guy, and being able to meet him in person was a huge treat for me. Uh, he's so nice and was able to share a little bit of his love for painting and teaching, and I, I've honestly been super inspired by him with my own YouTube channel and then um, just with my own paintings as well. He paints mostly from observation and a little bit less from photographs or even from looking at something in, in real life. So that's something quite different that I haven't really run into with other artists before. So thank you, Mural Joe, if you're watching this. Uh, it was amazing to meet you. Here is one of the paintings that I'll be demonstrating today. Um, I hope that you can learn a little bit from this video and that you enjoy watching. Well, here I am in Monument Valley. I drove for about 20 hours to get over there with my dog, and I really wanted to create some plein air paintings. So, <laughs> I started with some charcoal in my sketchbook, which I'm not really familiar with. I do not use charcoal ever. I thought I'd try it though, and I realized, of course, that it was very messy and not super precise. So I didn't really um, do a detailed sketch beforehand for this one. Uh, I picked this particular place because it w had a good pullout, it was kind of out of the way, and I just really liked the way that um, that monument, I guess you'd call it, was shaped. Uh, it looked really interesting, but I made a major mistake when I started. I did not, because I did not do a lot of sketching and uh, figuring things out, I picked a composition that I actually am not super happy with, so I did end up changing it slightly later, but it uh, definitely could have been better. Uh, I liked the, like I mentioned, I liked the shape of it, but I only did about half of the actual rock uh, where I should have done the whole thing and just made it a little bit smaller on the on the painting or put it in the middle or something like that. So I don't have a nice plein air easel. I just put the painting on the ground in this case. In another one, I propped it up against um, a fence. I, I should probably invest in one. That would probably make things a lot easier. But this works. I am pretty young, and I don't mind sitting on the ground for a few hours at a time. I used the dirt of the ground to make the uh, initial marks uh, to just block it in, which was really neat, but it was kind of grainy and not as dark as I wanted it to be, so I ended up uh, going with paint. I thought maybe I could do the whole thing in, in dirt, I thought that'd be really neat, but it didn't quite work out because I couldn't get those darks. I'd done the same thing a while ago in, I think it was in North Carolina with some red dirt and it looked really cool, but that was on paper, so a little bit different. This is on wood that I put a layer of gesso on. Uh, I realized that I should have put more gesso on after because it was still soaking up the paint so much that it was a little bit frustrating. Uh, I don't like painting on a super textured surface, especially if I'm trying to do something that looks semi-realistic or uh, gives a good representation of something. It was pretty cold here, but uh, it definitely got colder as the evening progressed. I started a lot later than I wanted to. I got lost a little bit on the way down and, and kind of took an hour out of my trip, so I got there later and I slept in a little longer than I should have as well, but I guess it's good to get lots of sleep when you're traveling, I don't know. So I started um, making things a bit darker because that was more what I was seeing. And it's interesting looking back, I actually liked 
this the stage of the painting before I started adding the paint, just the the dirt and uh, that that darker outline of things. I thought that was kind of a cool look, but of course I have to keep going and see how far I can push it and sometimes I go too far, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, so here again, just blocking in, trying to pick out the different sections and try to start thinking more about value and color. And I find it hard to paint both value and color at the same time. Details, I'll just paint in black and white or just very neutral kind of colors and focus on value. So if you saw my, my how to blend with acrylics painting, you'll you'll have seen that because I just would go over it with kind of a white usually and put in my details and then go over top of it with a wash of color. So when I'm plain air painting, I'm finding that I can't really do that, uh, that sort of, those steps. I have to think more about color and value at the same time because Things don't dry as fast. Uh, you're on a, a bit of a time limit usually. Um, I definitely was here because the sun was going down, and I had to, I had to just get stuff done. So there was no time for laying out my whites and trying to do all those details, and then going over with a wash of color. Yeah, there just wasn't that. Just wasn't a reality, and it was interesting because. I feel like the texture of things is different when you're outdoors and things are cold and stuff, especially um, if you're painting on wood, maybe, um, and painting with acrylics. I, f I found that they just reacted a little bit differently than, than they do in the studio, probably because I usually do a lot of layers. So I'll over days and days and days, I'll do tons of layers on my painting and it'll, it'll build up and I'll be basically like painting on top of dry paint. So that's a different feel than just painting thickly on wood uh, and quickly as well. So I knew that there would be a moment when the sun uh, peeks out of the clouds because I could just see it on that horizon and it was there for a moment, so short. And I tried to get that light in there but didn't quite succeed, I think. And the painting looked a lot better, I think, um, in the sunlight. And when I got it to my vehicle and, and looked at it, I was like, ah, oh, a little disappointed. It was, it was a bit duller and kind of just more like a big mess than I, than I had hoped for. So I went in and um, started laying out some more lights afterwards. Um, just from my memory, I was trying to trying to stay away from the photographs as much as I could and remember what I saw and where I saw the light hit and what colors it was. And you can see on the on the left hand side I changed that rock shape. I thought that this was a bit of a better composition just to show um, Monument Valley, like the, the monuments there. They have such interesting shapes and I kind of missed that on that first, on that first uh, composition. So yeah, composition is definitely a huge part of plein air painting. <laughs> I don't, I haven't done a lot of plein air paintings. I don't have a lot of experience. So this has been an interesting, an interesting learning curve for me. I feel like I learned a lot because I did three plein air paintings on this last trip that I took. And they were all a little bit bigger than what I'm used to uh, painting on site. I would usually do things in my sketchbook or whatever, but haven't done anything on like an actual board or a canvas before. It was a little bit easier because it was warmer. Uh, this, I think I painted this the next day or two days after I did that first one. And uh, it was just a little more controlled. <laughs> I wanted to add some of uh, those of those interesting cliffs in the back as well, those rock faces. And it was interesting because I, I put it down and I didn't like it. And so you can see in a minute, I'm going to just like I put it down and look at it for a little while. And, and when I looked at it from farther away, I did realize that it added stuff to the painting. It just added that depth that I needed, but um, had to change a, a few things up here. 
when things are farther away they're usually lighter and you can see more of the atmospheric color so um, usually that's like a, a blue or or a purpley kind of color uh, when things are far away they're not so warm as when when they're close up so trying to remember what I saw and then just use some of the knowledge that I have from uh, all of my years of painting I tried to tried to make this painting a little bit better and I'm lifting it up here because it started to rain <laughs> and I didn't want to get all of those little raindrops on my sky so now it's underneath the um, uh, what do you call that that thing from the motorhome overhang whatever so I'm out of the rain but still outside and just wanted to add a little bit I'll bring back a little bit more of that moody sky I kind of put a bunch of white paint over over top to um, get rid of that part of the rock on the left hand side so I had to go in again and make those stormy clouds and I thought it was interesting because I usually see pictures of this place when it's blue sky there's like super blue sky and you can see the the orange rocks so well and when I was there though it was definitely not blue sky exact opposite so I thought I'd try to represent what I saw in my own experience in my painting all right moving on moving on to the next one Grand Canyon whoo my first time there was amazing I just loved it so much and we went we went to see sunrise on the first day of the year, first day of 2020. Just gorgeous. My my camera's pretty bad at picking up actual colors, but it was it was lovely. However, this was this was not so lovely. It was cold there. So cold. You can see ice on the ground and snow and I'm from Canada, but I was still freezing. <laughs> And as you can see, the paint was not cooperating. It was freezing almost instantly. As soon as I put it on my butcher's tray, which was cold because it's a butcher's tray, it's metal, um, I would put a paint, a color of paint on and then put another one on and try to mix. But before I could even mix a color, it would freeze. So I tried to put it on the board anyways, but as you can see, it was not super successful. So again, using that charcoal, uh, I tried to tried to get some more definition. And my mother is amazing and had researched that you could see the same view from uh, inside. So I went to the geology building and set this up against a window and just looked out the window. And I, I don't know if that's cheating or not for plain air painting, but I don't really care. It was cold and it was not working. So it was, it was a good learning curve to, to realize, hey, you can change your plans, it's okay, um, and just, just do what's going to be uh, more successful and a better experience, honestly. <laughs> I was getting a little frustrated and my fingers were just freezing. <laughs> so now I was able to actually focus on um, mixing colors and painting and, and making a a good composition and I, I did adjust a few things because I was in a slightly different position but I was able to see the same uh, rocks so I thought that was pretty cool same surfaces and stuff so for my last painting um, the other one that I showed you I like I mentioned I really liked the shapes of the rocks but for this one it was a little bit of a different uh, a different purpose I decided to do a portrait oriented uh, board because I wanted to show all the different layers of the Grand Canyon you've got the sky and then you've got the plateau in the background and then you've got those little mountains coming down and then the ones closer to you and and just stop you can start to see the details closer and closer you get and then um, you can't see it yet, but further down I have even the, the Colorado River on the bottom. I was fortunate enough to get that spot where I could even see that. So that was amazing. And because we went to go see Sunrise, I was able to see 
uh, this area before it filled with light. So I loved the uh, that I could see all those colors and stuff. I realized later, looking outside and, and seeing when the light hit the valley, that it was hard to see colors and even some of the detail because it was so bright. So I was, I guess that's another tip is to just go at the right time. The last one I left it a little too late. Uh, this one I got up nice and early and start got an early start on it, which feels good to be able to finish it before you're like ready for bed. <laughs> yeah, so I, I tried, it, it's interesting because I think with plein air uh, or doing things on site, it's almost better sometimes to start with the thing that you're most interested in first, the thing that you want people to look at, because you might not have time to finish it if you leave it to the very end. And usually with my with my big paintings, I will I will leave the most important things to the very end because there's a reason for that, because I'm learning the whole time. So I'm I'm learning a certain technique or a certain way of painting and by the end of it I'm the best artist that I've ever been pretty much. So this this, this is a bit of a different thing. It's uh it's there's a time restraint and and yeah, you just got to get it all done. You might not have time to finish. So here the light did peek out um just starting to peek out and it, it hit that certain cliff face. I thought it was just beautiful, so I was really trying to play that up, and I kept that going, that light source going through the whole time that I was painting. I don't think that you can just keep changing your light source in your painting along with the light source outside. I, I want to do some kind of experiment where I start like one side of the painting in a certain lighting, and then I kind of change it throughout the painting, but did not try anything that ambitious for this one. Uh, so I just established what I saw as soon as I saw it and uh, as soon as I liked what I saw and then tried to stick with that the whole time which is tricky because looking out there I, I got a little lost I just like kept trying to find my place uh, just looking outside and it was it was difficult sometimes because it's far away and um, the lights changing all the time and I'm like okay what what am I working on even what what am I painting <laughs> oh, I love all the colors that you can see here. I I tried to be as accurate as possible. I didn't want to completely play it up. And I think that's another thing with plein air painting. I'm noticing that in my in my usual paintings I do change the colors a lot. I like to be really colorful and try to like guide people's eyes through with color and and do all those subtle hints and do layers and layers and layers. But I'm noticing for the plain air ones that my paintings look a lot more realistic color wise. They're not as detailed, not nearly as detailed, but the color is, is a lot more true to real life. So I think that this is a really good way of studying color. It was funny when I brought the painting in indoors from outside, all of that all of that paint that had frozen started to uh, thaw, so it started just all dripping down the canvas and looked kind of hilarious. <laughs> it, it made me laugh, it was funny. <laughs> so I was using uh, this big brush for a lot of the painting, a lot of the blocking in anyways, and then I ended up using four brushes in total. I didn't pull out the last one till the very end when I did the the river at the bottom. I'll show it to you in a minute. Don't worry. <laughs> All right, third painting. Last one of the group. Maybe it's the best one. I don't know. But I, I saw something that I liked. Uh, and for this one, I really liked the composition. There was this certain hill. I'm at Bryce Canyon now. Uh, this certain hill that I wanted to focus in on because Bryce Canyon has so many different complicated parts. It's kind of similar to the Grand Canyon in that, but it's more 
of the same thing over and over again. And I didn't want to sit there for hours trying to do the exact same thing over and over again to make it look good. I wanted to just pick one thing, try to focus in on that. And so I picked this certain uh, mountain hill. I don't know what you'd call it. Uh, <laughs> there's my dog. She's cute. Uh, and I, I just wanted to focus on that. So I tried to think about composition for this one and the landscape orientation worked perfectly for this. Uh, so I started, I did those two little sketches. I kind of had already made up my mind of what I wanted to do, but I'm like, hey, well, I'll do the sketches just in case I changed my mind. Uh, but I ended up just sticking with the one that I originally thought. And then I just drew it out on the board with with paint as you can see just some neutral colored paint and I wasn't super specific and didn't really keep with what I necessarily put on the canvas uh, all the board at this point but I wanted to get something down so that I could kind of know where I where I was and where I was starting to to block in and I think that this helped a lot compositionally because I I realized afterwards that this one is probably the best composition out of the three Yeah, it's nice to focus in on shapes for this one. That was kind of the thing I liked about it. And the colors too, like it's simple, but it's not at the same time. It's like you've got the snow and the, the orange rocks and that's so different from back at home. We don't really have those, those orange colors in the landscape. We have more blues and purples. So I was really enjoying that, um, that difference of color. <laughs> I have to admit that I thought that this painting was a total failure for most of it. I I was so frustrated and thought that I was just making it worse and worse and worse and ended up just like giving up. But now that I look at it after it's finished and, and indoors and um, out of the light and stuff, I'm like, hey, that actually looks okay. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't I did not think it was okay for most of it. So I kind of, um, I think I filmed this one more than I filmed all the other ones. So you can really see the process that I'm using. I am not saying it's the right process or anything, but it ended up working in the end. Yeah, just doing those local colors. Okay, well there, it's it's really switched to the, to like maybe an hour later. Got all that snow in there. But it's still pretty messy, as you can see. I'm just trying to figure out where those shadows are. And, and again, light's moving all the time. So I did block in those shadows and decided to stick with them. I'm like, I'm not changing this. Just like for the Grand Canyon, when I saw that light hitting, I wanted to keep it there. And I, that was a, an interesting part of this composition as well. I thought that those shadows were quite striking. So I put them in quite darkly. <laughs> in the second hill um, from the front one you can see those little like little pieces of rock and they they started to remind me of like toes and toenails and that's ex that's all I could see once I once I put those on so I did end up changing them a little bit uh, but you can see that I I kind of like outlined those shadows and then filled them in loosely and then waited for them to dry and now I'm filling them in again and it's really all one color and I didn't change that very much. I was planning on it. I was planning on going in and doing more details, but uh, looking at it from far away in the end, I, I did like it the way it was and, and didn't, didn't go in and do more details, which is hard for me. I love detail <laughs> and I usually like work on a painting until it's, there's nothing more that you could possibly do on it, which I love doing in the studio, but Plain air is so different, <laughs> and it's hard. Oh man, it's hard. I can't even just I can't even describe how hard it is. But the whole time you feel like it's just this race, and that you're kind of losing the whole time, and not really sure if anything good's gonna come out of it. I was thinking about leaving this one here, just putting a free sign on it, <laughs> but I didn't. I didn't. I brought it home. 
I, I, I put this one down a few times and looked at it from far away. And when I did that, I had a little more hope. I'm like, okay, it's not just a mess. <laughs> I heard someone walk by and say, oh, she's painting an abstract. <laughs> it's like, oh, no, I'm not, but okay. <laughs> But yeah, when I stood when I stood back, I'm like, okay, it's, it's I guess it, there's something there, maybe. And then in that bottom right hand corner, uh, when I stood back, I thought that it kind of looked like those uh, little peaks were coming towards you a little bit. So that was kind of nice. I played that up a little bit. It's interesting how much color snow has in it. Like I. I put it in and I thought, well, I'll go over it later and, and do some lighter stuff. And I am doing that here, but only for the highlights. I ended up just leaving those those darker purples and blues there because that was looking pretty realistic. I think light is a huge part of plain air painting, trying to just get those highlights and this was also kind of tricky because the sun did end up going behind the hill that I was standing on so there was sun for probably an hour or f yeah probably an hour uh, and then it started going down and was no longer on the part that I was painting so I kind of had to just remember what I saw and um, just think about how it would have worked uh, with that light hitting those certain areas of the snow. <laughs> and it again, it started to get a little bit chilly, but it was this was definitely the nicest weather out of the three paintings that I did. It was plus one for a lot of it. Uh, I think it just got down to maybe minus three or four by the end, so my paints were not freezing. Thank the Lord. <laughs> no, I think if I do go out and do more um, winter paintings, I'm gonna I'm gonna buy some oil paints because it's just not really possible. I think when your paints are freezing super fast. All right, all right. I think this is the end, guys. <laughs> As you can see, it's pretty messy, but. There's something there when you look far away. <laughs> and when you look close up, I guess it's interesting to see all those brush strokes and kind of madness. <laughs> feel I, I almost feel angry when I look at this painting, but it does have the depth that I was hoping for. And there's the, the real version of what I was looking at. And there's Monument Valley. It's got that reflected light and those monuments in the background and the ones in the foreground. I, this was my least favorite out of all of them, I have to admit, but I don't think it was a, a total failure. And besides, I learned a lot while I was painting this one. I learned a lot of what not to do, and a little bit of what to do as well. And there's the Grand Canyon. Whew, it's huge! My goodness! Oh, it was so fun painting all those different parts of it too, like the, the little mountains in the background and then get closer and closer and colors get darker and more vibrant and you've got that Colorado River at the bottom. I had to remember what that color was by the time I painted it because the light was shining on it and I, I couldn't see that that color that I saw at the beginning uh, in the morning. Oh, It was just lovely. And the last one, Bryce Canyon. Messy painting but I think it worked out it, it really looks like the sun setting, which which was a bonus. I wasn't really planning on that, but I think it looked, it ended up looking all right. And I, this might be my favorite out of all of them. I, I'm not sure. I, I like the Grand Canyon too, but uh, I still have to decide. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that video. It was really fun to make it and to just get the camera outside for a change and seeing the beautiful lighting and just the raw experience. Um, please subscribe, press like if you liked it, and I hope to see you again next month. See ya!